What is the feature, or are the features of SPARS that make them apart and different from the old PPAR alpha modulator? That's the key question. Now, SPARM is the acronym that tells Selective PPAR alpha modulator. It's really the evolution of an old class of drug that has been around since the, uh, I think, early mid 80s called fibrates. The reason why we have SPARM now uh, is that we understood uh, pretty well how fibrate works. Uh, they work uh, um, by stimulating a receptor in the nucleus and actually either promoting or inhibiting the transcription of specific gene involved in lipid metabolism as well as glucose metabolism or inflammatory reactions. Now, the reason why we have selected PPAR alpha modulator in an era of procedure, precision medicine is like uh, it's allowing us to basically sharpshoot some of the targets that we learn are particularly useful from a clinic in a clinical setting uh, that were targeting uh, or were the target of a fibrates. Why we need SPARNs? We realize that fibrates, on top of having uh, some positive effect, clinical effect, have also some effects that are thought or believed to be detrimental. So the SPARMs are selected by specifically highlighting and promoting the positive effect, uh, getting rid of some of the side effects that are supposed to be negative from uh, a clinical standpoint. Selected PPAR alpha modulators, Pima fibrate is one of them, are supposed to maintain the strong lipid lowering capacity, particularly in, in terms of triglyceride lowering. Uh, also some inflammatory effect that characterize the early fibrates, particularly on CRP, on uh, nuclear factor kappa beta and interleukins, getting rid of some of the side effects we saw uh, characterize the old fibrate trial, particularly with phenofibrate. I'm talking about an increase in creatinine, an increase in homocysteine, and somewhat increase in certain patients, a lot, not very often, of transaminase liver enzymes. So it's keeping the goods, getting rid of the bad. Yeah.